The iPod Touch 4th generation was at the time the slimmest one yet, and brought a camera to the front and back, as well as the new Retina display, much to the delight of its users. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and today we're taking a look at the iPod Touch 4th generation. How does it hold up 10 years later? <laughs> You heard me right 10 years later. It's hard to believe, but it was released the September of 2010, so we're just about there. This iPod was so much better than its predecessor. It was even lighter, it had cameras, it was faster, and best of all, of course, it brought that retina display. This was the last iPod touch to retain the classic iPod design with the stainless steel backing as the iPod 5 moved to all aluminum. iPods haven't really changed their design since 2012, so the iPod Touch 4 actually is still the second newest iPod touch design design. Maybe part of the reason it doesn't feel like it's been 10 years is because there really haven't been many changes in the iPod line. After the iPod Touch 5, nearly all changes have been on the inside. And when I say nearly all changes, I mean the ones that happened with the iPod 6 in 2015 and the iPod 7 in 2019, and that's it. Those are the only iPods that have come out since the iPod Touch 4. There's been basically no progress, and because of that, when you think iPod Touch, you probably still think of this one. It just screams of classic Apple from a simple time when iPod touches were still relevant, and iPhones hadn't completely overshadowed them in every possible facet. It feels so ancient beside my iPhone 11 Pro Max. Small, obsolete, and definitely from a different era of Apple. And yet they're still similar in that we have the grid layout on the home screen and the dock, and despite all the differences, it's pretty obvious both of these are Apple products. But don't get me wrong, nothing excuses the lack of innovation in the iPod line. This iPod is the second most recent big update to the iPod iPod Touch line, and man, that is kind of depressing. Although to be fair, even the iPod 4 isn't much of a change over its predecessors. That stainless steel backing has been used since the original iPod. But let's take a step back here and look at that design. Again, we have that stainless steel backing that scratches way too easily, and on the front of the iPod, we have the 3.5 inch retina display. This iPod coming with a retina screen was a big deal because it was a cheaper way to get it as opposed to the iPhone 4, and it was vastly superior to previous displays. This is a small device though, in both screen size and body size. It's quite thin and light, which makes it easy to slip into your pocket, which is nice if you're not using your iPod as your main driver. That screen is really small by today's standards, however, and it's quite painful to use. I can live with the 4-inch display on the newer iPods because the taller display makes it feel more natural to me, but using this iPod is a really tough adjustment. It does look gorgeous though, thanks to the retina display, and iOS 6 does really help it stand out. On the bottom of this iPod, we have the 30-pin charging port and headphone jack. This iPod Touch 5 went to the lightning port, which is much better, but for 2010 this was perfectly fine. With this very small body, we also get a very small battery, which means pretty poor performance nowadays. If your iPod has been used over the years, as most have been, you'll likely struggle with battery life. That said, if you keep it plugged in on a docking station or in your car, it does still serve as a pretty good music player. This one is 32 gigabytes, which is a decent amount of space for music. There were originally 8, 32, and 64 gigabyte storage options, with a 16 gig model coming the year later. 8 gigabytes even for the time was kind of rough, although unfortunately this wasn't the last year Apple would have that option for devices. But I'd say a 16 gigabyte iPod 4 and up was pretty solid, and for music, again, this wouldn't be a terrible device to use nowadays. But of course, most people stream from Apple Music or Spotify, including myself, so the amount of people that this can appeal to is limited. But if you have an old massive iTunes library, an old iPod isn't a terrible idea. But of course, as mentioned earlier, when this iPod originally came out, Apple was continuing to move away from music being the iPod's primary purpose. By 2010 already, Apple wasn't planning on making any newer iPod classics, and although the Shuffle and Nano lasted for a bit longer, they didn't stick around. The iPod Touch is the only iPod still being sold nowadays, and I don't think it's a crazy prediction to say that even its days are numbered. Anyways, with Apple wanting the iPod to be more of like an iPhone light of sorts, it got a camera on the front and back, something iPods hadn't had yet. This was an awesome improvement, and one that probably should have come earlier considering even old iPod Nanos had cameras, but at least now we had cameras and a selfie camera too, which had come to iPhones for the first time with the iPhone 4. Unfortunately, while we do have cameras on this iPod, they are not good. They're very bad. Very, very bad. Some of the worst Apple has ever made. We have a 0.7 megapixel rear camera sensor, 0.7 megapixels, less than a single megapixel. It's absolutely brutal, and any photos taken on this thing are pretty darn bad. Even with optimal conditions, any shot you take will kind of look like 
like there was a piece of scotch tape over your camera, it's not good. We can record video in up to 720p somehow, and uh, well, it doesn't exactly look the resolution. When you can count the uh, amount of pixels on the screen, it's usually a bad sign. The selfie camera is even worse with 0.3 megapixels. If you're rounding, you could call it 0 megapixels, and that would be pretty accurate to the quality of selfies you get from it. I guess it kind of sounds like I'm trashing the iPod's cameras, but for the time, it didn't really matter how bad they were, it mattered that there were cameras. That was enough for the millions of users who got their hands on these. It was just fun to have a camera that was with you all the time in your pocket. That wasn't something super common back in 2010. I'm sure if you ever had one of these, you had at least a few cringy 0.3 megapixel selfies you'd rather not talk about. And it's not like this iPod having a bad camera is an outlier. In 2012, the iPod 5 got basically the iPhone 4's camera, which was a big improvement over the fourth generation, but was still quite a bit worse than iPhones at the time. The iPod 6 bumps things up to 8 megapixels, but it still wasn't very good, and the iPod 7 didn't improve things at all. Having the camera in the first place is what was important for these devices, but I still would have liked to see a better camera. When it comes to the photography department, the iPod Touch 4 is atrociously bad. One spot where the iPod wasn't bad for 2010 was technical specs. We have the single core A4 chipset and 256 megabytes of RAM. Now this sounds bad, but for the time it was about the same as the iPhone 3GS, but with the same chipset as the iPhone 4. Because of the low amount of RAM, the iPod Touch 4 can only update to iOS 6.1.6, whereas the 4 has 512 megabytes of RAM and runs iOS 7. Only being on iOS 6 is a blessing in disguise for the iPod 4 because it performs quite well when it comes to basic tasks. It feels like a good experience, which hasn't always been the case for iPod Touches on their final version, the iPod 5 being a somewhat recent example. I wouldn't say it's fast, but I feel like it's very functional. iOS 6 really was very well optimized for every single device it ran on, and the iPod Touch 4 is no exception. In fact, if you want a device simply for iOS 6, it's actually one of the best you can get if you don't want to go to the trouble of downgrading a device. The iPod 4 and the iPhone 3GS both run iOS 6, but because the iPod 4 has the Retina display, it is the better pickup for nostalgia reasons. Believe it or not, it's actually possible to update the iPod Touch 4 to iOS 7, kind of. I'll link a video down in the description I did at the time when the hack came out, but basically someone figured out how to run iOS 7 on this iPod, which was absolutely insane. It sucked and barely worked, but just running it was amazing. I do think things have progressed since then, so I'd look for a different tutorial if you want to try doing it yourself. But yeah, I'll stick my first video on it in the description if you're curious. Very cool stuff. If you want to use this iPod Touch nowadays, well, firstly, why? And secondly, good luck with that. App support is non-existent, and while you can download the latest compatible versions of some apps, a lot of the time they tend to be completely broken, like YouTube. You could jailbreak relatively easily and tweak the iPod to make it a bit more functional, but even if you did, would you really want to use it? Anything even close to modern is really slow on here, thanks to the underpowered chipset and quarter gig of RAM. Ten years later, using the iPod Touch 4 is pretty much pointless. There are a few things you can do with it, maybe a few old games, and of course using it as a music player is always a possibility. But for the vast, vast majority of people, the iPod Touch 4 is now just a memory, one that will continue to fade as another ten years go by. Technology becomes obsolete fast, that's just how things are, but it is cool to look and see how things used to be, and how old tech has held up so long down the road. I know in this video I haven't solely focused on the iPod Touch 4, but there is a reason for that. It's already been 10 years somehow, and so I want to talk about what happened, or maybe more like the lack of what happened with iPods through the decade. It's not much of a hot take to say iPods hit their peak popularity before the iPod Touch 4 even came out, so although I don't think we realized it at the time, this iPod in a way was just part of the beginning of the end as smartphones took over. I don't know, I'm nerdy, I find this stuff interesting, and this is a really nostalgic device for me. I never had one personally, but my dad has a third gen iPod, or had a third gen iPod, it was stolen, unfortunately, and my cousin had a fourth gen iPod at the time, so it does feel really familiar. It's also a remnant of a different era. Only being updatable to iOS 6 makes it feel really unique compared to newer iPods. But with that, I think I'm about done here. Did you ever have one of these iPods? Do you still use it for something? Let me know in the comments down below. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you'd like to for some reason. And that all being said, thank you so much for watching. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time.